Hi, everybody. Once again, welcome to the Mark Few Show. I'm Greg Heister with the head coach. And, and coach, we're now into West Coast Conference play, and you're off to a great start. The game at Portland perceived to be one of the tough ones of the conference play. Well, first of all, it's great to have you here, Greg. <laughs> it's good to be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we knew uh, this was going to be a, a really difficult stretch we were in, and, and we knew each individual game through the process uh, was going to be tough. And <clears throat> obviously, anytime we go to Portland, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it's a huge game down there. Uh, you know, they have a very, very uh, veteran uh, experienced team that can really really shoot the ball and they've played together for a long time uh, they execute their offense uh, uh, extremely well uh, if you make a mistake anywhere they, they seem to exploit it and uh, you know they just got a, a really good club and <clears throat> to go down there again uh, with this uh, young group mm -hmm. and to be able to kind of withstand uh, the different rallies that uh, uh, Portland uh, made and, and end up getting the W and Opening conference with a with a win on the road against somebody that uh, that's going to compete for the conference championship. You know that's a good sign. And obviously, you you get to understand that really tough preseason schedule helped out at Portland. I mean, these guys were ready right off the bat. The crowd didn't affect them. And yeah, and, and you know uh, we tried to explain all week to some of our young guys, uh, <clears throat> which is the majority of our group. Yeah. Uh, that it was going to be a different kind of road situation. You know, going to Michigan State and going to uh, uh, Illinois, I mean, we're, you know, incredible places against really, really top-notch teams with huge crowds. But, you know, as you know, traveling with us, I mean, now it's, uh, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's obviously one of the biggest games uh, on the schedule that these teams circle to, to knock us off. And, and uh, so it's kind of a different energy and a different, uh, uh, a level of passion maybe that the that the opponents bring in and, and uh, we talked about matching that and I thought our guys did a good job of that. Is there a, a feeling of refreshment once that non-conference schedule ends and conference play starts? Do you get refreshed at all or are we uh, into the, the dog days of the schedule now? <laughs> I don't know if refreshed is uh, how I felt this uh, last week but uh, uh, no it, it's just a different challenge. It's, mm -hmm. it's really the same kind of uh, grind and gut-wrenching uh, uh, challenge or feeling, but it's just different. You know, it's 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 uh, you know, obviously, like I said, you're playing the Michigan States or the Cincinnatis or the Oklahomas. Uh, um, you roll into conference play and, and you can just sense how bad these teams would would like to knock you off and. and uh, uh, and, and I think you come at it from, uh, you know, the perception that, well, Gonzaga should win every game, and it's just that's not realistic. These are really good basketball teams. People saw what Portland did in the preseason. I mean, they, they went into the Anaheim tournament, which is one of the best preseason tournaments in the country, beat UCLA by 27, beat Minnesota, which is a, a, a ranked team, and, and then gave West Virginia, you know, a, a pretty good run. Uh, uh, so, I mean, this is a good, good basketball team. To get that uh, win on the road is, is, a, is, a, is a good sign. And there are some really good uh, basketball teams in the West Coast Conference this year. I mean, I, I think the way it's played out, I mean, this is the best conference out west right now. I don't think there's a doubt with how uh, the wins that we accrued in the, uh, in the preseason. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Mark Few Show. When we come back, we'll check back with the Decade of Excellence. And also, we'll sit down with Mangisto Arap when the Mark Few Show continues. That's why I just feel like, you know, so uh, lucky and uh, privileged to be able to have the opportunity that I have today because I know uh, I came from, like, the bottom, bottom, you know, so I'm very thankful for everything I have. Dickow had plenty of help inside. Zach Gord was the anchor, and Violet, or should I say Chunk, was emerging. He came in on his recruiting visit and guys asked him, hey, do you have a nickname? What do you want to be called? And they were like, what they call you in high school? And I was like, oh, they just called me Chunk, you know? And that stuck. He started seeing, you know, some gains. He got a little more explosive. He's a little stronger. He's able to dunk on guys now. And one day he just shows up in the weight room, I think it was, and he goes, you know what, guys? Don't call me Chunk anymore. Call me Chisel. <laughs> we let, it, we let that, ha that guy have it for, God, literally the whole year. Here's a lot to hit it, Jeff Violet. I mean, that was another guy that 
he played through injuries, he played through sickness, he just, he just played. All right, Coach, Corey Violet, one of my favorite players in, in this 10 or 11 years. Uh, Mine also. Just a good, good guy and, and a great, great player. Just a great guy. Yeah. And, and just a, a, probably as consistent a guy as, as we've ever had in our program. Just every night you could just count on him to go out and get uh, double digits re rebounds. Probably, I mean, I can't think of a, a more consistent, better rebounder than we've ever had. Uh, in our program. He just had a knack to, to go get the basketball and he took pride in going and get the basketball and you know big physical strong uh, uh, kid who grew into a man while he was mm -hmm. here at, at uh, Gonzaga and uh, but but just went every time and, and as simple as that sounds I mean that's that's a gift I mean we're still you know consistently looking for that and in, in, in the team this year uh, but loved to hit people and loved to get hit and could deliver after he got hit and, and was a, a better athlete, I think, than uh, people gave him credit for. Uh, you know, early on, I think our guys, you know, they used the nickname uh, Chunk because uh, he was pretty, pretty thick. But he always had, you know, he was quick off the floor uh, and could attack the rim. And uh, I think as it evolved, he, uh, if you can change your name yourself, I think he self-coined he uh, his name Chisel <laughs> as he kind of got a little more cut up. And, and, uh, but yeah, and, and just an amazing guy. He's having a, uh, an awesome career uh, overseas and uh, uh, very unassuming and just brings his lunch pail every day and just punches the clock to, in the, in a, now that he's playing professionally, he's doing the same thing as he, uh, was for us here. Uh, uh, just phenomenal player and, and a great person. Corey Violet, an easy guy to miss around Zagville. When we come back, it's the Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. Stay with us. And welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Time now for the Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. And, and Coach, we go up north of the border for this one. It's uh, from Ian from Vancouver, British Columbia. And he oh, writes, great city. Yes, it is. How big of an emphasis will you put on recruiting from Canada in the future? We love the Zags up here in the true north and would love to see more Canadians on the roster in the future. Well, we have a lot of Canadians on our, yeah. our roster already. And, and we don't specifically... <clears throat> go out to emphasize, hey, we need to get a, a player from here or a player from there. I mean, we just kind of go where the players are. And there's uh, Canada basketball that's really coming on. Uh, obviously, you know, with, with you look at Bowl and Kelly and, and Manny and, and, and Rob, uh, you know, uh, we think we've got some really, really fine young players uh, there. But, they, you know, there's still some great players uh, uh, coming up in the ranks. And I think uh, uh, basketball is becoming more and more popular up there. It used to be just a hockey uh, uh, area, and, and I think they've achieved a lot of success. Uh, and, you know, throughout the years, with whether it was Steve Nash or Jay Triano way back in the day or, or uh, you know, some of their uh, 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 Olympic teams have, have became more and more competitive. And, and uh, you know, uh, a, a bigger population base, I think, than people think, and they're playing some good basketball up there. So we'll go wherever we have to go to uh, uh, find players that fit our program. <laughs> it was Manny who told me the other day that he thinks you guys should start playing the Canadian National Anthem before the game, <laughs> like they do in hockey with, with both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would probably should, I, yeah. I guess, with as many uh, uh, Canadian kids as we have. but. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a time out. It's the Mark Few Show. We'll be right back. It's been quite an interesting past few days for a few teams around the NCAA this week. The fifth-ranked Duke Blue Devils go down in their second conference game, losing in a tight one to Georgia Tech, 71 to 67 in Atlanta. It was the Yellow Jackets' first win over Coach K and company since January of 2007, and also snapped a seven-game win streak for the Blue Devils, including that 76 to 41 win over the Zags.